Welcome to the course Knowledge and Curriculum. We are into the fourth unit, Curriculum Designing, Development and Evaluation. Now we have moved on to the fourth uh, unit, fourth module, that is 4.4, where it talks about the evaluation of curriculum. This is Dr. V. Girija, Professor and Head for the Department of School of Education, Ways Institute of Science, Technology and Advanced Studies, Chennai. Let us move on to the module now. Let us look into the process of curriculum evaluation. We often say the performance of a child has to be evaluated. An answer paper is to be evaluated, etc. What exactly is this evaluation? In its broadest sense, we can say it is a matching of the objectives and outcome of an activity. Evaluation, like all major terms in the curriculum field, enjoys multiple definitions according to Maddow's Scriven and Stuffle Bean 1983 curriculum evaluation is the process of determining to what extent the objectives are actually being realized. Curriculum evaluation refers to the collection of information on which judgment might be made about the worth and effectiveness of a particular cultural program, I mean curricular program. It includes making judgments that help in making decisions about the future of program, whether to retain the program as it stands, modify it or discard it. According to experts, there are four central features of evaluation. They are evaluation is appraisal in which we make judgment. Such judgments are made in the light of criteria and criteria are based on particular contents and such criteria embody human resources and evaluation model therefore inform decisions. Need for curriculum evaluation. The fundamental concerns of curriculum evaluation relate to effectiveness of effectiveness and efficiency of translating government education policy into educational practice. Status of curriculum contents and practices in the context of global national and local concerns, the achievement of the goals and aims of educational programs. The need for curriculum evaluation is twofold. Firstly, it is to ensure whether implementing the selected curriculum meets the desired objectives. Secondly, to ascertain if it needs any improvement or revision. revision. In addition, parents are interested because they want to be assured that their children are being provided with a sound and effective education. Teachers are interested because they want to know what they are teaching in the classroom will effectively help them cover the standards and achieve the results they know parents and administration are expecting. The general public is interested because they need to be sure that their local schools are doing their best to provide solid and effective educational programs for the children in the area. Administrators are interested because they, are, they need feedback on the effectiveness of, the, of their curricular decisions. Curriculum publishers are interested because they can use the data and feedback from a curricular evaluation to drive changes and upgrades in the materials they provide. The ultimate goal is always to make sure that the students are being provided with the best education possible. It gains significance because the curriculum evaluation is a means of deciding whether or not to choose curriculum is going to bring the school closer to that goal. Objectives of curriculum evaluation. The intent of the evaluation phase is to determine the level of student success and the impact of the course design on student performance. To determine the outcome of a program, to help in deciding whether to accept or reject a program and to ascertain the need for the revision of the course content to help in future development of the curriculum material for continuous improvement and to improve methods of teaching and instructional techniques uh, uh, that is for performance. Types of curriculum evaluation Formative evaluation It occurs during the course of curriculum development its purpose is to contribute to the improvement of education program. The merits of a program are evaluated during the process of its development. The evaluation results provide information to the program developers and enable them to correct flaws detected in the program. Summative evaluation. In summative evaluation, 
The final effects of a curriculum are evaluated on the basis of its stated objectives. It takes place after the curriculum has been fully developed and put into operations. Diagnostic evaluation. Diagnostic evaluation is directed towards two purposes, either for placement of students properly at the outset of an instructional level, such as secondary school, or to discover the underlying cause of deviances in student learning in any field of study. Steps in curriculum evaluation. Curriculum evaluation is a systematic and organized process. Hence, it involves a set of sequential steps and focus on one particular component of curriculum, collect or gather information, and organize the collected information, analyze the organized information, and report the findings and recycling the findings for continuous feedback and modification and adjustment to be made in future. Tools and techniques of curriculum evaluation. The important methods and techniques employed in curriculum evaluation include discussion. The important methods and techniques employed in curriculum evaluation include discussion, experiments, interviews, that is group and personal, and opinions of various agencies, stakeholders, observation, procedures, questionnaires, practical performance, and official record. Several models have been developed for curriculum evaluation. Popular among them is the Taylor's Objectives Central Centered Model and Stuffle Beam's Context Model, Input Process Product Model and Bradley's Effectiveness Model and Scriven's Goal Free Model, etc. Taylor's Objective Centered Model. It is one of the earliest curriculum evaluation models which continues to influence many assessment projects. It was proposed by Ralph Taylor uh, in the year 1950 in his monograph, Basic Principles of Curriculum and Instruction. And this model focuses on four main areas as follows. The purpose of curriculum being evaluated and the experiences that are provided to support that purpose and how these experiences are organized and how the outcomes are evaluated. The steps included in the model are begin with the behavioral objectives that have been previously determined and those objectives should specify both the content of learning and the student behavior expected and demonstrate familiarity with the dependable sources of information on questions relating to nutrition and identify the situations that will give students the opportunity to express the behavior embodied in the objective and that evoke or encourage this behavior. Curriculum program components. Thus, the curriculum provide evidence of administrative and school board support. Does the curriculum plan incorporate a mission statement? Does the curriculum plan establish a task force or advisory committee? Does the curriculum plan facilitate the involvement of parents and the community? Does the curriculum have scope for research and development? Does the curriculum plan utilize student learner outcomes as a measure? Does the curriculum plan have an evaluation tool that provides for the collection of qualitative data? Thus, if you wish to assess oral language use, identify situations that evoke oral language. Using the results to make the necessary modifications in the curriculum. The Taylor model has several advantages and it is relatively easily to, easy to understand and apply. It is rational and systematic. It focuses attention on curricular strengths and weaknesses rather than being concerned solely with the performance of individual students. It also emphasizes the importance of continuing cycle of assessment, analysis and improvement. But it has certain disadvantages. It does not suggest how the objectives themselves should be evaluated. It does not provide standards or suggest how standards should be developed. It emphasizes on the prior statement of objectives and may restrict the creativity in curriculum development and it seems to place undue emphasis on the pre-assessment and post-assessment, ignoring completely the need for formative assessment. The process of curriculum revision. Curriculum revision means to give it a new position or direction by altering the philosophy by way of its aims and objectives, reviewing the content included and revising the methods and reinventing its effectiveness as the case may be. The process of revision is a common activity involved in every stage of human curriculum development 
in ke in some cases it is explicitly shown while in some cases where others it is uh, implicit implement evaluate design develop and analyze is the process of curriculum revision revision represents an articulation of what students should know and be able to do and support teachers in knowing how to achieve these goals the thought curriculum was to be revised in order to match the newly integrated assessment models mandated by state the need for curriculum revision before we learned the revision i mean the um, various uh, methods of revision we should first of all understand the need for curriculum revision the revision of curriculum is needed to restructure the curriculum according to the needs interests or abilities of the learners it is required to eliminate the unnecessary content and teaching methods and introduce latest methods of teaching and learning practices it helps in a greater level of correlation is aimed at between the students theoretical courses and learning practices based on the evaluation of the curriculum and to implement the recommendations of the evaluation with the due approval from the concerned changes needs to be made resulting in revising the curriculum also the pace of knowledge explosion and need to keep pace with the changes in development in various related fields becomes the driving force for curriculum revision based on the evaluation this revision helps in the changing objectives content or methods as the case may be to suit the specific requirement benefits of curriculum revision curriculum revision establishes a clear philosophy and set of overarching goals that guide the entire program and the decisions that affect each aspect of the program it allows for flexibility and encourages experimentation and innovation within a structure also it encourages interdisciplinary approaches and the integration of curricula wherever appropriate it promotes a means for its own ongoing revision and improvement and is linked to teacher evaluation goals and professional development